Hello and welcome to Infinity. In version 1.7, a new feature was introduced called procedural texture, which sounds complicated and to some extent it is, but it's got some useful bits in it. But they're kind of not always obvious, so let's have a look. You can get it in the same way as you can with other filters. You can get the destructive way up here, so filters, colors, and there it is down the bottom. Or you can go through the layer, new live filter layer and colors here, and it's there. And you can also get it down here under the live filters here, which is procedural texture there. So now this is because it's a live filter, that means I can come back and change it later, which is great. If we start off here with the presets, it comes with a bunch of existing presets. Some are quite simple. So if I say sine wave, all it does is produces me a, a wave. I don't know how useful that would be to you, but there it is. It also gives me some controls here so I can change it. And this is quite a handy part of it. And up here, you can got the formula that is put in here for, this is a sin for sine wave and calculate look, there's 360 degrees there, go in and so on. It's also got some complicated things like it can do fur which is great if you want texture and it can even play around with what that looks. And maybe that's useful for doing things like um, if you want to create a texture within an image to make it look old and, and that stuff. But you start looking at this and going, oh, hang on a mo, this isn't sine waves, this is Perlin, you de, what the heck's that? And I, I, I taught math in school and I, I was a computer programmer and I can see these functions here which need describing. Please show me what they are. So I go to help down here and let's bring that line up here on the wrong screen. Here we go. So search procedural texture and there it is. It starts telling me about things here and down the bottom it gets here's some of those mathematical functions you can put in. So there's the sign and so on in here. You can do rounding up and rounding down and squares and so on. That's great. And then it goes down here and starts going into vector creation. And this just says 2vec5 and 2vec6. And then it, there's more and more and more and more. So there's tons of stuff here. But it doesn't tell me what on earth they are. So I'm sure there's a book somewhere, but I can't find it. So, what can we do that's useful in here, apart from this stuff, which if you know how it is, well done, that's good. You probably don't need this tutorial. But these, I can click the X on the end of these and get rid of those, and we can sort of start again. Because the way to start when doing photography, which is what I do, is in this little plus here. If I add a plus there, what I get is a line here, it starts off with a zero, and defaults to R, and guess what, R, G, B, A. This is red, green, blue, and alpha, which is transparency. So if I click on the green as well, then this is the red and the green, both set to zero, so all that's left is blue. So that in itself could be useful. But if I go to the R here, now I can put in something. If I put in G, now it's put green into the red channel. So everything that's red is the same level as green. So you get some start effects, but you can play around with things like that. So if I put R, nothing's changed there. Put in G, and I'll do a plus here to add a new one here for G, and see it automatically goes to the next one. G, then plus again for another one, automatically goes to B. So I've got RGB, which is so it says don't change it, just put in the normal red value. But I could do, say R times star. A. What's that A there? This is where the bottom comes in. Here you can add some variables. If I put in that 0 to 1 there, because colours go from 0 to 1, it defaults to A, but I can change the name of it here anyway. I can put in a description here, which I can say, say red volume, and it's like a volume control now because it's taking the red value and multiplying it by this value here, and I've got a slider for it. Then I could do the same with green, and call that B. 
because automatically these variables are called a and then b. But then you've got other ones here, so I go on from minus 1 to 1. So now I've got a, a 1 to control the greens. Doesn't make much use sense here going minus, so let's get rid of that. But if I get to the next one here, R stands for a real number, which basically means it's a fraction, so you can have 0 0.1 or something like that. So I could put in there 0.5, and that's going to be the, the B there controls the, the green, so I got half the amount of the normal green in, so it's leaving me with a bit of a tint in the other colours, and so on. And I can even then start putting in, so I could say times open brackets 1 minus a minus b, so I saw a little formula in there. And now these then are now controlling the blue as well. So I could start doing interesting things in this. But this basically then, as an overview, um, this lets you put in formulae for red, green and blue, very similar to apply image and the same formula can be used. And for some curious reason, procedural texture seems to calculate faster, which is handy. You can add in variables here. Some give sliders, some you have numbers, and rather annoyingly you can't have a slider and a number, which you do get on, on a lot of, uh, of the other controls. So you can set the names here and so on. As well as real numbers, you've got Z, which is integers, an angle input for things like hue, and elevation rotation input. Isn't that jolly good? And then the usual things like opacity and blend mode, which you can do anyway. So there it is. That's what procedural texture is overall. And I'll be explaining more and using it in some other tutorials. So that's it and thank you very much for watching.